active and say welcome to people who are here watching Dog Pound D and D, which I flipped the camera because I'm smart. How are you guys all doing? We have Chaos and Cupcakes after how many fucking weeks? Or uh, a million? Is it two or is it three? I think it's three. Let's see. You had one. I think we missed three weeks. Let's yes. see. Because my 17th was the wedding, so you didn't have one then. You had a long session that Saturday. So one, yeah, we, two, th three. Two, yeah, this will be. a meetup session, so it's only yeah. two. Yep. But it's, it's been a while, nonetheless. Icarath has, has been missing his drugs, I assume. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's just a given for drugs. anybody who's, who's that high all the time. <laughs> Alvin's been contending with his own moral code. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you drop that big bomb where he's like, yeah, peace, everybody, I'm leaving. Yep. <laughs> Which does remind me where we're at. We are at your house because Alvin it's... just lives in a mansion. <laughs> You know, low key. <laughs> low key. <laughs> Mr. Humble Beginnings Alvin. <laughs> yeah, so we, we left off. Um, uh, basically, Alvin was like, hey guys, I'm staying here. And we're like, what the fuck, bro? And then um, he's like, I know a, a little small person who can help you. And then he chastised Jordy, and that was it. Yes. Oh, um, that was where we left off. Um, I and then I I can cast message to, so that we don't have to story right in. Like, oh, he has. To, we have to go find him. I was like, I can just cast message and he can come to the city. So you mean? Also sending, yeah, sending. Also, we're gonna come back to this town at some point for Alvin, and Alvin is gonna be in his house with like his hair on fire, dark black robes, kind of per bluish skin, because he has the hydra now. <laughs> I'm gonna have like a little red and blue minion that just does everything he says. Clever joke. People are laughing, so. Well, well done, sir. Well done. All right. So you guys are here all gathered after Elvin dropped that bomb. Um, he's telling you about there's somebody that, that's going to be helpful. And uh, what you guys talking about? Well, I assume that all of you are uh, going with the original plan of making your way up to the Dwarven city of Morden. I a plan. At we'll have to I discuss specifics go. about whether we're going to the Citadel or we're going to the Elven City on the way. Because regardless, we're going to need access to both at some point. Yes, uh, we're going over the ocean. How's that sound? Well, luckily the person I'm assigning with you has a, a remarkably good swimmer, so we should be able to assist in any problems that go along while you're out in the ocean. Um... But, let's see, uh, I will cast Sending and see if uh, the little rascal is nearby. Um, he tends to like to linger near the outside of the city. Um, he's only a, he's but a, he's, he's young. He's very young. Um, and he's very small as well. Uh, but he's very brave in the end. He's a kobold, so he's like a dragonborn, but smaller. So basically an adoptive child for you. Kind of. He does call me Al Uncle Alvarak. Oh my god, we have a baby? <laughs> Thank you, Meta. <laughs> Can I yeah. adopt him? Um, You know, knowing him since his parents did abandon him, I don't think he would find that all out of the question. <laughs> so, Alvin is now a mayor. He has now owned a town. He owns a hydra. And today we've made the grand reveal that he has a long adopted son. Good on you, lad. I met him when I was 
when I left um, Seth Falls the first time. Um, Alvin's quite the family, man. <laughs> he traveled ah. with me on my journey up north, uh, but since I was starting to make my way into the monster territory to do some research, uh, he has been banished from the Kobold clan up there, so he was afraid to see his clan members, fearing that they might kill him. I taught him a few things along the, our travels to make sure that he wasn't alone anymore. And uh, I told him once I had found a safe, a good place to uh, live that he could come and stay with me if he wished. Tarek just pulled out his notebook. I'm gonna write in here child care services as part of your fee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, speaking of north, which way are we taking to go across the ocean? Are we going west or north and then going west or are we going west and then the north if you go west for us to go to Barrendor. if you go west you could e you could easily have take a ship to either point also i believe if you take it from the go north and head west you're most likely only going to be going to morden in the in the end the city of spires is the one where they can teleport people out right yeah Yes. So there's also that option that I mean, you would know about that out of you know, like in character, you would know it whether or not you guys want to take that is up to you. Oh, but just, you would know that that, that exists as a transportation option. Let's do it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I want to do it the hard way. I don't want to go back to fentanyl. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you guys plan on making your journey by foot, or do you plan on are you going to use? Would you perhaps want a carriage and horse, horse, a horse-drawn car carriage to make your way across? I, I thought we were going by sea, mate. I don't know how we take a go. Like, if you have a carriage and horse that can go across the sea, then fuck yeah, let's fucking take I'm that. Talk if you're going to, I. I I forgot. Um, no, like, are you just going to walk your way over to... Um, what was it? Where, what city did you did you say? Barrendor. Barrendor? Are you going to walk to Barrendor? Would you like a, some sort of extra transportation? Considering you're staying here for the city, it might be best if we go on foot, just so that as presumptive mayor, you aren't giving away city resources to people who are leaving? Fair. Well, um... If there's any... and all that, you know. Yes, if there's anything you need to prepare for your journey, do let me know. I will need to cast Sending to get uh, Kormal here. Um, and, uh, hopefully, once he arrives, you will all be ready to depart. So, uh, Alvin will cast the sending spell to contact Cormal. All right. And, um, let's see. Let me think I'm going to say. You guys can do whatever you need to do. Um, what do you guys want to talk about? What about what, what do you, what plans? Where do you guys want to go through with this? Uh, yeah, Icarath is going to kind of look around and be like, Look, I'm not part of the group, like, originally, mate, but like, I'm here now, so what are we doing? Where are we going? Are we going to, like, is there somebody said we need to cave in? Well, possibly. Yes. Well, Thalrak um, um, needs to go across the sea to redeem Bartholomew. I believe, Jordiel, did you? Oh, like, for a prize. I'm it's not, not sure. It's not to. It's not like I have to, I want to. The man is a saint. Yeah, the man is a legend. Yes, I'll yes. get good prizes for redeeming a saint. 
I mean, I've been blessed by Moradin to do so. When I took up the task, Moradin himself enlightened me with the warm feeling of knowing that I was doing the right thing. Yeah, all right. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta turn him in for some prizes. Yeah, and usually people don't beat around the bush. They're just like, yeah, there's a bounty on him. But you know, if we want to call it redeeming for prizes, that's fine. That's not. <laughs> that, that is not. That, 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 that is just slowly trying not to grab his warhammer right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. Oh. I believe Joy L is agreeing to do something with Rashok. I'm sorry, I just got back. What the fuck? I believe Joy L is trying to is going to do something for Rashok in the Elven City. Hmm. I, I thought that was Th I thought that was Thalrak. No, that was Jordy Necromacy books from the library. Oh. Yeah, because Thalrak can't go into the Elven City unless he wants to, you know. Be a prisoner of war. You could go in, but you but due to the fact that you're a paladin of Morden, you would most likely have to do the one thing you hate and hide all symbolization of Morden to be able to go into the Elven capital. I mean out of character Thalrak would probably do it if it meant helping in the situation, but it all depends on the like how he's treated as well. Like independent dwarf, like to, in common knowledge, would be like independent dwarves and independent elves that are not associated with kingdoms and will swear to the fact that they're not part of those kingdoms um, can make their way around. Um, and I mean, the reception isn't great, so most of the people that do it are usually merchants making some money between the two, but it's risky business and you get treated like shit. But there is some traffic of dwarf and elf and elf and dwarf. If that if that helps, yeah, it does. <laughs> yes, and I believe. Um, well, I was told by Treeface that I need to go across the ocean because that's where he found my MacGuffin. <laughs> what What about Treeface? I turned around. What happened? He told me where the thing I'm looking for is. <laughs> Sorry, I was in the middle of mes my sending. My apologies for missing what you said. So he told you what that you what you needed to find was in. Uh... It was across the ocean. Oh, so it's either in the Elven capital or the Dwarven city of Morden. With an Novastean member. Oh, how lovely! More of a reason to kill the Novastean. Yes. Oh, well, so now killing is acceptable. <laughs> Cut. Wait, was that ever off the table? Because I have not been making plans with that off the table. <laughs> <laughs> Shush, George, George. Are you talking about not killing uh, Eduardo? Is that what you're talking about now? Well, what else will you be talking about? I, I mean, there's quite a few gonna... things. <laughs> God, the alien just got really thick, didn't it? Nice. Also, real quick, uh, Elred, do you have anything to say in this conversation? Uh, <laughs> Elred is just uh, sitting back and enjoying the conversation between everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Get, pop, get some popcorn from the kitchen. <laughs> So I don't I don't think you've hired a new chef yet. No, I haven't gotten to it since the next day. We haven't got hired Thalrak, right? <laughs> no, yeah. uh, Thalrak's leaving. I can't hire him. <laughs> Otherwise, gladly. Um, no, uh, Thalrak is a is a is a cleric and a uh a, a f should be more deemed worthy of a of being a forge master in the end. 
Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, Cornwall should be on his way soon. I don't know how long it will take for him to get here, but he can uh, show up knowing, whenever you want him to show up. <laughs> knowing him, he's probably over enthusiastic and has been waiting in like a small grouping of trees near the outside of the city. Um, so the moment I hear one of the guards come running in, that he, there's a small kobold running around the city, it clearly he has arrived. Uh, have you reformed? The, I don't think the guards have been reformed enough in one day to be competent enough to inform you of a kobold in the city. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. He's he's not gonna know where where to go exactly. He just well, knows this to is go the biggest the building. Oh, he doesn't know to come into. Oh. Well, I could have, I could have said he could come to the big building. Yeah, like I mean, it's the biggest, like it's the big royal <laughs> palace in the center of town. Yeah. Well, since your gods are relatively incompetent, would you rather I go wait for him at the city gate? Um, I can join you out there if you'd like. He's you can all go. Yeah, we can all go. I can, I can go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll tell him he's gonna be my kid. I'm gonna have a son. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, why not? Why don't we all head out there? All right, and Terry jumps up on the back of Miss Lippy and comes out the, goes out the door. Well, I'm glad that my wife has certainly befriended the Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> and we're into the main city. <clears throat> and the way I've written Cormal, it wouldn't have taken him too long to get here. All right. So probably about the time we get to <clears throat> the edge of the city, we can probably see him coming in from the distance. Yeah, and there's also a anime waifu on top of a hydra that he can see. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you prepared him for that. Uh, no, I, I, he likes all types of uh, creatures, and so it's not going to be something that's out of his uh, forte. Um, <laughs> so uh, Alvin is the first telling sign as he sees a owl fly up to him and land on his shoulder. Alvin will be like, "Oh, he's coming! He's almost here!" And uh, you guys would see a two-foot-tall. Gray, black and gray uh, kobold walking up towards running towards Alvin and leaps up and gives him a hug. What's what's the state of repair for his, his clothing? Uh, Cormals? Yeah. Um, he's got like re regular little uh, probably some tattered like cloak on that he keeps to try to hide it? his eyes. It's probably dirty because he lives in the woods. Oh, Terry 100% whips her staff around and Masterclass prestidigitates everything on him. Uh, he looks very like a squeaky clean, clean perf. Everything is in the best shape it, like it was just made. And yeah, he looks like he's squeaky clean out of a bath. Hello, Gravel. I know, I'm not doing that fucking voice. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that voice, but I don't want to do that. I'm just not trying to go that high pitch. Um... <laughs> I need to f fine tune his voice, so I'm just going to stick with a normal voice for the time being. Um, <clears throat> uh, hi, Uncle Alvin. How are you doing? Uh, oh, I'm doing quite fine. Hi, Komo. How are you? Good, 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 good. Who's that? Why Terry jumps down. Hydra? Terry jumps down off the Hydra in front of Carmel. You're so cute! <laughs> uh, she's pretty. Who is she? That's that Miss Lippy. Terry. She likes paste. I just waited. She put Terry to interrupt and just be like, Terry. Um, well, uh, everyone, this is Cormal. His full, I believe the name he was given by his uh, original mother was Cormal Kind Eyes. Where's the uh, rest of him? <laughs> what do you mean the rest of him? I mean, he barely comes up to my kneecap. Where's the rest of him? Uh, he's a kobold. Kobolds are generally small. Yeah, why are you making fun of my height? 
Terry go Terry says, Don't worry, I'm short too. Did Elvin They're tell you short. we were adopting you? What? Yeah. No, just, Me and Elvin are adopting you. No, I'm just uh, trying so hard not to laugh right now at all this going on. Well, he did say that it that he'd take care of me when he got a better house, so it make so you're we adopting live in a mansion. Now? Yes, yes, I'm in a mansion, <laughs> but uh, for the time being, a uh, little Como, you've always said you wanted to go to different places. Yeah. Would you like to travel with this group of people? Gormo looks at all of you. They look fun. Sorry, just waves a little bit. Like, hi. I like him. Jordy will uh, get right up next to Alvin and say, exactly how old is this thing? <laughs> um, Going towards Kobold years, he's two years from being a full-grown adult. He's four years old. Oh. Um, he was wow. kicked out of his clan for being too kind. Um. Yeah. Wait, for Cormal, did I work with you at all from where he came from, Elvin? No, you just... Well, you told me about the general idea of where he came from. We may have a different discussion on his backstory later. Okay, I, I made it very... I made his backstory very brief. Yeah, so. no, because his backstory now fits with the new... Also, you guys know that there's a new continent, right? Yes. Everybody yep. here? Yep. <clears throat> Not to be the odd man out, but nope. I had okay. no fucking clue. Far right side, <laughs> up north. It's always been there. It's not like it just appeared, just... It, it, it just, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's, it's always been there. It's just we didn't know it. <laughs> it's the Wildlands. And for all the people that are like over in this area that are orcs, goblins, etc., etc., that are all kind of civilized, they have their cities, they have their um, like town centers, they have kings, queens, leaders, whatever. It, it follows your basic structure. The Wildlands is kind of the homeland of pretty much all of those races and of grad's followers but they are very nomadic they live off the land and in concert with the land um it's a bit br more brutal there um between both the different races each other and the different tribes of those it's all about territory it's a real mad maxian but you know orcs goblins and other such yeah 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 um. <clears throat> well, um, yes, this is Cormor, everyone. Uh, I hope you'll take good care of him while, while I leave him in your while I have left your uh, your side. Now, Cormor, hmm? uh, be a good boy and listen to uh, Uncle Thalrak and and Uncle Jordy. And I look and I point to Ikrath. Don't listen to him, though. Ikrath <laughs> 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 looks behind him and is curious as to who you're pointing at. <laughs> Voltia is also a good one, but uh, whatever you do, don't let him put a collar around you. <laughs> what the? I would never. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now I got kids on Expertly, and now I got a nephew. <laughs> Also, does Cormal have prestidigitation? No, he does not. All right, good to know. As a ra as a ranger, the rangers don't get um, cantrips. anything good. They just don't. They don't get. get anything they good. don't get cantrips. But my subclass has given me access to one cantrip, which is thaumaturgy. Nice. So, so. Terry says, Elvin, we're adopting him, right? He's so cute. We got a cleric." Yes, of that course. I can officiate. Um, uh, maybe you should ask Cormo about this because I think adopting Cormo, without. Cormo, do you want to be my kid? I'll take such good care of you. I'm pretty sure Alvin and him already have an agreement for Alvin to take him on. It's just now he's getting a mother in the tie as well. If if Alvin's my new dad, I'm fine with it. Well, of course, we're married. Didn't he tell you? 
Yeah, I mean, he just told me now, but he didn't tell me before. <laughs> we haven't really been able... He hasn't been able to talk to me too much because um, I kind of went into hiding for a little bit. Why'd you go into hiding? That's so sad. Uh, scary people. Ooh, scary people are awful. Alvin kills them. He does? He does. All of them do. Hmm. Oh, to be fair, that's actually not the only people we kill. Karath <laughs> <laughs> Ixnay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you like that, Karath? I do. I, th um, I'm saying that to you in character, by the way. Uh, yes, we can adopt him, Terry. Don't worry. Um... I, do, you, do you want to go through the whole paperwork and all You're the, the mayor, you can just write it right up. Now, do you want... What? You just write it up. You're the mayor. We're... Okay. <sighs> <laughs> I don't, this is a completely different voice than Terry's ever had before, but I have no clue what she used to have. Also like how Terry and the Hydra have duplicated. Oh, are they somewhere <laughs> else on the map? Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Two copies of them. I'm like, what the hell? Um, they're, 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 they're multiplying. Well, <laughs> a month from uh, now, there's going to be ten of them. Oh, no. Um, so, you best all probably let Bartholomew know while, that you are about to take off. I will get the paperwork in hand and done. Um, Balrak, I believe, Elred, Elred, you needed a new symbol of uh, Moradin, did you not? I already have that in my book. I'm gonna make it for him. Yeah. Excuse me, but we leave. So if you if you need anything from me, I'll be f filling out pa these paper this paperwork real quick, and then I wasn't expecting to write this today. <laughs> I mean, your entire time in this city has been man. I didn't expect X to happen today. Yeah, I didn't expect this to happen today. And they were like, oh, it's basically Alvin's kid. I'm like, Terry's jumping all over that. <laughs> um, just, just so you guys are brought up to date on what I've been in character whispering back and forth with Ekrath. I was letting him know how old Terry is. It's, it's like 3,000 years he, old or something. He's reacting that. poorly, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, that Terry's 3,000 years old? <laughs> Yeah, he's only just now picking up on that. <laughs> I also cracked a joke, but we'll we'll keep that for him to expose at a later date. Yes. So, what are we doing? Where are we going? Yep. Well, lad, we're trying to still narrow down exactly which way we want to go, but uh, do you know about all the new here in the town? Mm, no, I don't go into towns very often. All right. Well, he's a friend of mine, and he's needing a little bit of help. So we're going to go help him out. Don't okay. mind the serial killer that we left on the loose. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, man. Oh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> hey, we hired him. We hired him to be a civilized serial killer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How are they doing that thing? If you're killing somebody, at least it needs to be on your, my payroll. That, right? Is that your thought process, Alvin? I'm sorry. I just I can imagine somewhere in the down the line future as just, just Alvin and Portmall sitting in like on a balcony or something. And Alvin's just explaining like all the various things he's done. Like, don't don't ever hire a serial killer to be a Morally good serial killer. There's a. It's not gonna work out well. <laughs> Don't copy my mistake, my child. <laughs> and one day all this and just waves to the town. Get all these. Remember, no. Think of this. Uh, He's still got to win if, the election too. <laughs> even if Cormal was the same age as Alvin, he outlives Alvin in the end. Because <laughs> Cormal's lived to be a hundred and twenty. Ah. So that's fun. Well, Alvin fills out the paperwork. Um, Who's going to Bartholomew? Good old Bart. I'm, I'm going to go to Bartholomew to go make 
um, Elrid's uh, emblem of Morden for him to have. All right. And then, and on the way there, if Elrid's walking along with Thalrak, um, and before he goes, he's going to like offer Cormal to go with him, or he can stick with Uncle Jordy. It, it, he doesn't really care either way. Cormal will go with. All right. So on the walk there, um, he's going to offer Elrid like any feedback on what he wants in terms of the design for the emblem or pendant? Uh, just nothing gaudy, just like simple and modest. Got it. Do you want your name etched into the back of it as well? Sure, what the hell. All right. All right. Um, we'll move to that scene shortly. Um, yes. Jordy, Icarath, and Voltaire decide where you're going, and then we'll start through scenes. Real quick, how tall is Cormal? Two feet tall. Oh my God, Thorak is just gonna have him hanging off his arm then. <laughs> yeah, Cormal is two feet tall and weighs twenty-one pounds. That's the life. Oh, Cor Cormal is literally like a child. Thorak is just gonna have fun with him, be like, "You can hang off my arm, son. Let's go." <laughs> Tharax already got a bunch of kids, so, I mean, what's one more? <laughs> Everyone's following this. No, this is the nephew. This is this nephew. Tharax the... trying to become the cool uncle. Tharax is going to become the cool uncle. Are you going to introduce him to his cousins? In time. <laughs> in time. Right now, we're just going to get used to Uncle Thalrash before we meet the extended family, because the extended family is a little bit of fun drugs, or at least some of them are. No, they're clean. It's it's your it's, have, it's your wife that's, oh, well, your fiancé. I, I already have to deal with Icarus, the local druggie. I don't want to introduce him to the other druggie. <laughs> And now Tharak is having awful thoughts in his head about trying to avoid Icarath and his wife ever meeting. Oh, okay. Oh, pop now. So everybody is walking in together, and Bartholomew sees Cormal and says, Boy, you're popping them out tomorrow and more, aren't you? Huh? Hey? What does he mean by that? <laughs> First it's the Krakens and now Kobolds? No, 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 boss, no, no, this is Alvin's id. Wait, wait, Not how does that work? You have, you have whatever she is and dragon, is that what that makes? You get the little, you get the little woman and you get the dragonborn together and that's what you get? It's adopted. Oh, well, he's adopted. I shouldn't say it. That's rude. Sorry. Jordy, uh, under his breath, says, well, "Perhaps that's the best that three thousand year old womb could spit out." <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, did you hear that loud enough for Bartholomew to hear? The only person loud enough to, or I said it loud enough to hear, was Ekarat. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Out of character, I'm so glad I didn't take a sip right then, because holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to take a sip of water, and, you, and I'm like, wait, he's going to say something. I'm like, I just lowered it back down just enough. God, he God. says, well, it's good. That means that wasn't a shotgun wedding. Uh, maybe. We'll have to confirm with Alvin. Question, how does the term shotgun wedding exist in a universe with no guns? <laughs> if you start to question <laughs> most of the things in this campaign, it all starts to fall apart a little bit. <laughs> Would dwarves call it a also a name for a type of ballista that shoots multiple? Yeah, people. I mean, are we are we gonna start questioning Stephen Siegel now? I mean, <laughs> he was a brave man and he died young. What else are we gonna start questioning? Oh, <laughs> Dreamius. Oh yeah, we need we need to sit him down and question him. <laughs> oh, where wait, I've lost the space of where we are. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, adapted. Okay, so yeah, it says. Oh, so what oh brings you all here? Well, I need to do a little bit of work for this one. The emotions that are I want to make him a. I need a Moradin. He needs a new one. So I was going to make him something that was, you know, not flashy, something simple that was by his design. That should take no and more I... than an hour or two, I suppose. And what no. about the, the peanut gallery? They just decided to tag along, and this little one, and he, like, pats Cormo on the head. He goes, this one I just want to show what his Uncle Thalarek can do. Because that's what I've been telling me, and that's what I'm sticking with. So Bartholomew reaches into a, like, a cabinet on the ground and pulls out, I can't really explain, like, describe it to you, but, like, think, like, a baseball sized forge like like anvil and hammer <laughs> and he hands it like to baby's Cormo. Ball. yeah it's like baby's first for baby's first anvil and then he kind of like opens like a little slot like a sliding slot on the forge and it just has this little teeny spot where you can just stick like the tiniest little metal rod i, I don't know if he's gonna be making anything i thought of you but it's never too young to start. True, but I don't know if he wants to start. Or For if he just to... you want to forge like your Uncle Thalrak, right? Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he hands him like a little teeny bar stock and like a little teeny like belt of tools. Cornwall oh, well, looks look. very determined and walks over to start working. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> While the little one is working, perhaps we should look. If he's been away from the city for quite a while, there's the question of his equipment. Do you have anything, or are you able to make anything in short order that the little one can use, Bartholomew? Well, if the pen is only going to take me an hour, I can use uh, my other trick in an hour to make him something, but I want to examine his armor and all that first. See what's the most critical and needs to be the most updated. Um, I mean, Uncle Alvin did make sure I was okay and would be be safe on my own, but if there's something that you think I should probably be better equipped for... Oh, we're just making sure that everything you do have is the best that we can get you. We don't want you getting hurt, because then, you know, Daddy Alvin will be very pissed at us and probably put our heads on us. But that's for another day. Yeah, okay. out of character, I'm assuming Cormal doesn't have any magic weapon. No, he's just got studded leather and a scimitar is his uh, weapon of choice. Okay, yeah, I was I was looking to see if perhaps we could get you something to catch you up to the rest of us. I was going to see if, like, maybe getting him at least, like, making a plus one armor or something for him, or even a plus one weapon, because I can keep, like, if whichever one we don't make magical every day i can just be like plus one weapon or armor plus one weapon or armor like just keep doing you know the enchantment that's a free action thing for me doesn't cost me anything because i can't make any magical weapon any better so it's like if there's still one thing that isn't magical we can at least go that route gotcha so is uh, is Bartholomew able to make a plus one scimitar in short order manner? Um, he would have well one that small. He would be able to make it. He'll give you a discount at two fifty. Oh, it could help. Like Thalric's gonna help. He's gonna, if anything, he can make the weapon. It's just he's gonna need Bartholomew to enchant it. Yeah, we'll go with one hundred one then. All right, Thalric will pay it. He's like, eh, whatever. We ain't gonna have it be any. All right, so uh, you said 101. Yep. Also, uh, Cormo, roll, roll your luck. Luck. Okay. Twelve. Um. So, you managed to smash together. It's it's rough. It's the lines aren't straight, but it is recognizably a 
poorly worked version of the Moradin holy symbol mm -hmm. that Thalrak was making. He comes to show it to me like a kid, like really heavy their project. Thalrak is legitimately going to ask to take it and he's going to put it like on one of the metal um, bar, like metal rings in his beard. <laughs> what do you do? What are you doing, Cormal? <laughs> I I'll give it to to Thalric. All right, yeah, Thalric is just gonna be like, <laughs> "This is beautiful," you know, and he's legitimately gonna put it on there, like to wear. <laughs> Shit, delightful. Shit. Oh, now I gotta get new art with that on there. <laughs> I'm gonna get, that. <laughs> get new art with Thalric and a little pendant on there. <laughs> Um, uh, Jordy, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just chilling at this point. Still and, cracking jokes with Icarath. <laughs> and, and Voltaire? Um, he's gonna call his horse. Tornado! Tornado's gonna at least be outside. Alright, so Tornado shows up, and he goes, What is it with you and that horse, boy? That horse has been my only company since I left Clastow. It Until sounds like you need to get yourself to a whorehouse. <laughs> Weirdo. Um, Cormal Cor hearing that, he's like, That horse is your only friend? Um, uh, well, not necessarily. I have other friends. Like, He's the one who has been with me on my journey the longest. Okay. Well. And uh, uh, Cormal will whistle for his uh, owl, and his owl will fly onto your shoulder and land there. And Kitty will keep you company now, too. It, it's all right. You can take your owl. Okay. But thank you for the offer, young one. Uh, so this is taking like an hour or so of time, right? Yeah, Alvin, you're probably done with your documentation in an hour. Okay. So uh, while that is going on, Ikarath would be reading his alchemy books, but he doesn't read them like a normal person. He reads them like the pirates out of Pirates of the Caribbean 2 when the guy is reading the Bible, but he can't read. If you remember that <laughs> you know, scene yeah, where he's uh... like, he's holding it at a horrible angle. He's using his, his, uh, <laughs> His finger to place his, you know, spot on the, the on the in the words. He's like eyeballing it up close and stuff like that. That's how Icky reads. You get credit for trying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Except here's the crazy thing: it doesn't look like Icarath could be able to read, but he totally fucking can. He's actually speed reading because he has a twenty intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> But his forearm wisdom just means he's got really poor form for how he's reading this book. Tell me, Jordiel, what would you blame for Icarus behavior? You know, if I had to guess, it's probably the large quantities of illicit substances. Well, I wouldn't blame it on the sunshine. No, the moonlight. Not even the good times. I'd blame it on the boogie. <laughs> Which is another word for partying involving heavy drug use. <laughs> I had a dictionary to look up if it had anything to do with it. See if I could make that joke. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was worth waiting a month to hear. Absolutely. fucking <laughs> Lutely. <laughs> So Alvin shows up around this point, and you notice that Cornwall is working a, full, a little teeny anvil and forge. Uh, Dragonheart also gave five XP to you, uh, Voltaire. Thanks. Um, yeah, but you walk in, and yeah, Cornwall is working a tiniest, the, the world's tiniest little forge. Well, you certainly are deciding to start putting him to work, I see. I don't think he's... I certainly doesn't look like he minds. And Terry walks in like, Oh my god, he's the most adorable little dragon dwarf ever! Huh? 
Thomas eyes just twitched her thing, Dragon Dwarf. <laughs> Dragon Dwarf. <laughs> Dra Dragon. Wait, Dragon Dwarf. Yeah, you. You're the teensiest little dragon. Mm. And Cormal hearing Dragon Dwarf, he's like, um, I think the Dragon Dwarf is more like this. And uh, Cormal waves his hands in the air, and you guys watch as a small drake stands, uh, pops up next to him. Terry claps her hands. <laughs> Death. Absolutely amused, and you guys. So I was just gonna look between like the little Drake and then back at Alvin and just be like, um. Oh, um, yes, Cormo is able to conjure forth uh, multitudes of different types of creatures. His specialty happens to be that. That is Petunia, is it not, Cormo? Yep, that's that's Petunia. The use of the word conjure makes me think that he's some kind of warlock and. Hmm? Therefore, make me not trust him very much. No, he's not a warlock, he's a ranger, but, um, you see, he woke up with a dragon egg on his lap one day, and it hatched into that. Unfortunately, the dragon is not fully belonging to this realm. It, uh, but he takes care of it. That's Petunia, his little dragon. Jordy, so, will, Jordy will narrow his gaze at Cormal and say... Huh? It, it, he's not gonna say this to Cormel. Like his his body is still facing Alvin, but his eyes are gonna like narrow towards Cormel and say, "A dragon egg appeared on his lap one day." That's what he said. I don't. He's a very young child. You have to realize he may not have realized what happened. Perhaps he should be sitting a little close to me. I could show him a few things. So what, the dragon's got a part-time job here, it's 9 to 5, is in another realm? <laughs> <laughs> the, to keep the creature here, it, f it drains Cormon, because he has to keep it under his control. Um, it's like slaves that you spend magic on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To keep in to put in mind the thing that Cormal's able to do is um he's able to summon a Drake. But it can only stick around for uh an, an out, amount of hours equal to uh his proficiency. So he can only keep it up for three hours. Um it's to create if as balance. long as it's not six hours, then you should seek a medical professional. <laughs> uh, it can be six hours, but that's only a level twenty. Um <laughs> But, uh, no, the, the, yeah, he's able to summon a drake to his side. And, uh, yeah, that, that's just all of what that is. That's his, that's his subclass. He's a, he's a drake warden. Um, Sorry, I think he's a thief. <laughs> no, that's fine. All right. <laughs> all right. He's this able to summon a drake to his side. Ikarath <laughs> immediately <laughs> wants to learn the summon Jason Derulo spell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I'm just like, this is the most adorable thing. Okay, if we're going to get Drake and Jason to roll, can I at least summon T Pain? <laughs> <laughs> that's, in the, uh, that's in the Halloween adventure side quest. <laughs> With the, and, and Jason Siegel is going to be the, the, the undead lich. Excellent. I mean, our session is on Halloween. <laughs> there you go. See, the return of Jason Siegel. With T Pain, Jason Derulo, and Drake. It's a musical oh, adventure man. through the haunted crypts. So, um. With special guest appearance by Prince. After Cormal has finished making the symbol and giving that to Thaurak, he looks at, um, Bartholomew and, and his thanks for letting him use the small forge. He will hand him one of the tiny little wooden carven. Uh, animals that Cormo made, and he will hand him a small bear. Is that, that's that's adorable. Good, great craftsmanship. You're going to be a great forger. I know it. And he kind of pats him on the head. Mm. 
there's anything anyone else needs to do? Other than Tarek finishing up the emblem for Elred and then working on whichever formal wants the armor or the sword. And Tarek will even ask him, like, what do you want? Do you want the shiny sword or do you want the shiny armor? Basically, look exactly like your other one does, unless you ask me for changes, which I will gladly do within reason. Uh, oh. So, shiny armor means I get hit less. Shiny sword means I hit. Um. You hit. You hit harder. Hmm. Shiny sword. All right. Anything that you want changed on your sword? And he's going to, like, ask to look at it, because you said it's a scimitar, correct? Yes. Okay, he's going to look at it and be like, what are the daughters here, like, above your hand? Do you want it to look like a little drake? Like the one that you, uh, that you brought here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then do you want anything special on the blade? Do you want, like, an etching of a dragon on the blade? Uh-huh, yeah. All right, I can do that. And Tarek is just like taking a look at it, thinking about how exactly he wants to do it. And then he's going to be like, All right, kiddo, you want to. I don't know if you want to watch Uncle Tarek sit for an hour being boring till the process is done. Because I do this one a little differently. But uh, you're free to watch. Otherwise, I'm going to go find a nice quiet spot to sit and work on it. Okay. And then after that, Thalak is just going to, like, head out. After giving, you know, Elred his pendant, he's like, here you go, lad. Elred's going to ask if he wants anything for it. <clears throat> no, you're good. It's fine. I had some extra materials lying around from before the battle. And then he's going to look at Bartholomew and be like, when I bring the sword back, do you mind enchanting it? I'll pay you the gold for it. Meta? Yes. So, oh. Um. She says, uh, "Certainly, I'll enchant it." Sorry, I was DMing. Uh, no, no, you. Yeah, no, you're good. Okay, then. Um, we got two hours to fill. What are What is everyone doing? Uh, let's start with Elred. But you got two hours to do things. I I don't know. <laughs> now, is Quartermall coming with Thalrak or no? Yes. Okay. So, Thalrak is going to ask Quartermall if he wants any kind of special effect on it. He's going to try to do something a little out of his depth with this. It's going to take a little bit more time, but he's going to try. And he's going to be like, do you want it to basically look like it's on fire, but not really do anything other than maybe glow? That sounds cool. Could Elrid stand around and watch Thalrak and potentially learn? Uh, yeah, you can attempt to. Um, I'm trying to think what you would roll for that. <laughs> Intelligence? Let's go with that. Yeah. Uh, you pick up 10% of the skill. So what's the skill? Smithing, forging, what is it? What would it be? For what I'm specifically doing? Yeah. I'm doing the, um... Uh, what should I call it? Hang on. I'm doing the Artisan's Blessing. 
So that's a ch that's a divinity channeling that I'm doing. That's not specifically oh. forging. Well, then you just. I mean. Yeah, you just get ten percent towards forging. I don't see forging on my it's, sheet. It's a custom thing. Yeah, because um, forging would be like uh, smithing tools. Yeah, oh, like okay. smithing tools and all that. So. Yeah. Basically, this is working for your proficiency with it. So, like, you're quote unquote ten percent towards getting proficiency with it. Yep. So, because then at that point you'll be able to like add your proficiency to that roll. Okay. All right. So, uh, Voltaire. Um. I'm not sure. Let's come around later. I need to know what anyone else is doing. Yep. Icarath. Icarath is just going to spend the next hour reading his book. Okay. And Jordy then. Jordy is just going to be leaning against a wall waiting. Okay. So that gets completed. Um... All right, sorry, I just got to tell something this is going to be interesting. Okay, so Therak, go ahead and tell them tell them what you, what has been made for him. <laughs> All right. You're gonna leave the grand reveal to me. This is oh well. You spent 50 XP on this. Yeah, I didn't expect this out of 50 XP spent, but I'll take it. <laughs> what, what what happened? Oh, you, Thalrex is about well, to tell you. Grand divinity, and went a little bit. Plus ultra with it because I'm I love all might so I'm gonna reference that. Yes. <laughs> so as the ritual completes, Formo just sees basically his old sword glow really brightly. Because this is just how I imagine it. it's kind of like full metal alchemist alchemy, where things glow for a hot second. And he's gonna see the sword that, you know, Thalrek asked him an, an idea for. And he agreed to where the handle is now gold ish color, like a nice goldish color, but not exactly gold. It's not gold for sake and purposes of being, um, you know, actually durable. But the handguard is shaped like a drake with its wings tucked in at the middle. And its head is on one side, the base of the tail is on the other, curved like a traditional scimitar or scimitar's handguard is, with the head on the upper, like upward curving bit. So the head is facing upwards. The blade is that of a traditional scimitar, but the coloring on it is more of a darkish gray. Like it's not traditional metal and etched inside or on the blade itself is a what looks like rippling flames but they're in a dark navy blue so it's like the metals tinted in color in the etchings for that flame and he looks at Cormel after he picks it up and gives it to him holding it out, you know, so you can grab the handle of the sword and goes, now, this is going to be a little bit tough to explain. <laughs> but I want you to think of a word that you will say when you want to hit an enemy extra hard. When you have that word in mind, 
grab the handle and, in, and say the word. That will enchant this blade. And if all goes well, you will get what I was hoping to give you. Thoughting a little bit out of my normal bits, but okay. it's, um... it's just not it's going to be amazing if this works. <clears throat> Are you looking there with like a big gleeful smile on his face? Okay. Um, first thought oh, that came to mind. Oh, I, mean, I heard of the ask. Um, his so he has a clan like a a, a title name for his last name. Okay, it's not like a clan yeah. name kind of thing, but it's, so like it's just... not. It's like a title name, so based on how what how he was when he was born. Uh, he has he was given the name by his mom, despite his father wanted to give a different name. His last name is Kind Eyes. Okay. Um, because just, I, I wanted to mention this, but I wanted to ask before I did um, what his like if he had a like quote unquote last name and all that. Right at the base of the blade, or right on the handle at the very bottom of it, the pommel of the blade, the pommel of the handle is like a flat circle with his initial K, and then the other side is initial K, so it works out really well. It's, it's just K on either side of it for both of his initials. Okay. Um, and Cormo, uh nods his head like he's got the word, and he grabs it, and he, says, he said, told him to speak it. Okay, and then whatever word that decides, as soon as he speaks the word, the blade engulfs in blue flame. Uh, he shouts Banzai! As he s grabs the sword. Oh god, I love it. <laughs> well, Patrick's gonna look at him and go, now remember, you have to believe in yourself. You are the mightiest little dragon that we have. Put it is to keep working, but this is yours. Use it well. Okay. I got it. All right, good. And then Thar's gonna, out of character, like in character, he's just gonna explain that he can't just keep using it constantly for this effect to go through. Mechanics wise, he can only use it once per short rest. Okay. But after the weapon gets additionally chant, um, basically like fully enchanted by Bartholomew, it's a plus one sword. Okay. But with this bit that Thalrak put in, whenever the blue flame is in effect, it does plus one to hit and damage on top of the plus one that it already has. So basically it makes it a temporary for one swing okay. uh, D2 or plus two. Right now it's only it's only like for one hit. Or what's the or did you have a different duration in mind? Uh yeah, it's just one hit. Yep, one hit. Yeah, I, I just I sent the quick, dirty version um, to uh, Dragonheart in DM. Okay. I will add that to Cormal's thing. Okay. Um. Has anybody informed Bartholomew that? You guys are about to go help him clear his name. Alric was going to do that when we went back to get like the <laughs> enchanted. Mm -hmm. Basically, be like, while we're like, if he can help with the enchanting, he will. But otherwise, he's just going to be there, like, you know, listen, we're, I don't know when we're going to be back, but we're going to head off here shortly to go and try to clear your name. And that's why I'm trying to get the nephew set up with gear you're going to raid the dwarven capital read it but then the why elven... does he need armor oh sorry why does he need a, a new weapon the road better me is going to be dangerous and full of battles and look i don't want this because the, to... no, uh, the uh, night is dark and full of perils yeah pretty much <laughs> um but he's gonna explain like we may get into a fight in the elvish capital he doesn't see a fight really in the dwarven one but it's more if if things go into the way that thalrax sees them going he wants that kid to be prepared as much as possible and have the best chance of killing those that wish to hurt him
It goes. I wish you luck. I'd go with you, but I feel no. I'd be more of a hindrance than a help. I would rather you be here to help Alvin in the city. He seems like he's going to need some sort of guidance one way or another, and you are a good man. He is building you me a temple. temple. Yes, and I would like you to help him design the thing, as well as decorate it with your words. His, his eyes kind of light up a little bit at the thought of both, you know, getting to build the, the best forge th uh, setup he's ever experienced, and then also about bossing Elvin around. And Thalric's going to, like, take the Warhammer that he gave him and offer it back to him and be like, if you want to take this to display, I will fully understand and have no ill will. This is not something that I wish to take where it may be lost for a good. He kind of nods solemnly and, and accepts it and says it will be the first one displayed. And underneath it will say wielded by Thalarak, whatever the fuck your last name is. Wow. <laughs> Out of character, That's I have no idea. Hold on. It's, Mag it's Magma Forge. What was that? Thalarak Magma Forge. It was th wielded by the girl Thalarak Magma Forge. <laughs> Don't worry, Alvin's got like 12 names and I only know one of them. Now I'm just gonna like nod and smile and just be <laughs> thankful for it. He's gonna be like, good. What's your next gonna... best weapon that you have? Um, Probably just my standard Warhammer because I had that until I got the Warhammer. Yeah, you can take a plus one Warhammer, just a generic. That he'll give to you, just you know, run of the mill shit. I, I'm not too worried about it. It's not like a specific. I, yeah, I, no, but he would give you something to replace it. That was. He, no, no, like out of character, he legitimately doesn't want like an alternative. Like oh, he likes the then. that he has. <laughs> like I'm not trying to like be like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, kick a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah, but no, I think that's just fine. For, it's more of. He's done some good with the hammer while he's here helping Bartholomew, but he doesn't want to take this prized work and would rather try to bless basically the Warhammer that he has made himself to be something that may not surpass Bartholomew's work, but can try to come close to it in a way. Yeah. All right, cool. So he, you've done all that. Some hours have passed. Um, we're probably getting towards mm, little at, maybe like two o'clock in the afternoon. We must mist, make haste. We're going to have to leave soon. Uh, makes sense to me. Bye. Let's start heading up towards the, you know, Citadel. Because either way, we can either go to the Citadel or to the Elven Capital, whichever one we ultimately decide to land on. And we can discuss plans on the way. We have, what, a couple days, I believe, to get there? Oh, and real quick, Elvin, did you inform Cornwall or get him to sign his papers? Oh, yeah, I would. And uh, I would... Uh... So does the papers need to be signed in common? <laughs> um, I mean, it's Cornwall your town. Not, Cor, Cor, I will. No, okay. I can translate it. Um, it's it's because Cormal only knows how to read Draconic, so, um, he would be signing his name in Draconic. All right. Yeah. I mean, if that's allowed in your city, it's allowed. Then there you go. So now Cornwall is adopted. And you guys can continue out along your way to the gate. Icarath, Elrid, and Thalrak, are you all joining? Yeah. I mean, if the party's leaving, I feel like we should yeah. all be going. <laughs> um, 
Alvin's going to say, make sure he gets his last goodbye in before you all leave. Dalric is pretty much ready to go, like, as the party is leaving, so he's going to go with them. Um, I wish you as, as much luck as I can offer you on your journey. Um, I do hope that it is sooner rather than later when we meet once again. Oh. <laughs> 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 to where I'm not sure. <laughs> um, uh, I certainly uh, we uh, I'll send a sending to you guys from time to time to keep in touch with you, how things are going here, and to hear how your journey fares. And that's why we have a campfire section in the Discord now. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> oh, yeah! Because sending spell. <laughs> R-C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-D-S-O-N -S um, uh, Alvin will offer a handshake to Icarath and Voltaire and Elrid. Alred will grab his hand and one hand and his elbow with the other and vigorously shake it. Say it's been a pleasure running around and slaying slavers with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is what we have done, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> yeah, it Icarath will grab him by the forearm. You know, like like a, a, a Roman handshake. And just go, I have no fucking clue what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, just just follow just follow either Voltaire or Jordi. I think uh, or Thalric. I think those three know what they're doing. Voltaire's gonna grab okay, him. Okay. Voltaire's gonna grab him and his hand can do one solid and say, Good luck, though I'm sure you won't need it. Uh I'll take it in the end. Thank you very much, Voltaire. Um, yeah, uh, to Jordy, I will, yeah, I think Jordy's, I don't, I don't think Jordy's a very much hugging man, so I will, uh, offer a handshake to Jordy as well. Jordy will shake her hand and say, you probably will need luck. This was the city of thieves after all. <laughs> Turning it in a completely different direction would be one of the hardest tasks I've ever tried to do. And you started by making a serial killer head of your cards. You know <laughs> well, what? <laughs> if you need to make heads roll, you know how to get in contact with me. Of course. <laughs> um, and then, because I, I think I think at this point, uh, Alvin thinks Thalrak is a is a, a little bit more on the hugger side. He'll offer a hug to Thalrak, and if not, a handshake. Oh no, Thalric is absolutely going to take that hug and, if possible, lift you up just off your feet a little bit. It's oh, he's taking the hug. No, you don't, you go, don't you go die on this now, lad. You keep this town straight and on the narrow, and we'll be back for the end of time. All right. I'll try my best. And uh, Alvin will walk up to Cormo. And pat him on his head and give him a hug. Man, I believe at this point that I am now adopted you. So I guess if you want, you can call me father. Or you can keep calling me uncle for the time being. It's up to you. Um, but good luck out there. And take good care of yourself. And uh, take care of the rest of them too. And Terry hands Cormal a very tiny handkerchief. You know, comparatively sized, it would be normal size for Cormall. Yes. Yeah. It just has a little bit of a sparkle to it. <sighs> you gotta keep yourself clean out there. Okay, I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the sub, PGA. So, out of character, um, it kind Real of quick. works like prestidigitation on skin. So, like, okay. it will perfectly clean off dirt, mud, anything off of your skin. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out here for comedic effect. I do hope you know that sending off your minor child for which you are the legal guardian with a bunch of people of questionable repute is a combination of child endangerment and child abandonment. <laughs> well, Elvin trusts you, so I guess I do. Triple A or Alvin. No, no, like how Rock wrote in his book, Under Services, it's just extended child care. Yeah, he's going with his uncle. Uncles, he called Jordy Uncle. Oh, yeah, Boo. two uncles. It's better than one. One of his uncles is a hired gun. Then he knows how to shoot straight. Who is enabling <laughs> a drug feed. That's the one thing I wasn't. I, I'm worried about. That's why I told him not to trust him. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I, I intend on uh, making sure that uh, Cormal eats his vegetables. <laughs> he says, Alvin. Hmm. You're leaving him with them. I I I'm I'm leaving. I mean. Him in the after okay. everything he, that Mr. Mr. Dark over there just said. Oh, all that was out of character. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, there, there wasn't the bullshit British accent, so. Okay. There wasn't the bullshit British accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, I missed the accent change. <laughs> yeah, no, every, every piece of that was just out of character. Okay. Me talking about law. That's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. So he sends you off. She sends you off. Fare thee well. So we have a drug addict, a dragonborn, two dwarfs, a baby, dra a teentiest dragon, an edge lord, a horse, and an owl leaving town together. Yep. <laughs> this is the start of a bad joke. <laughs> Five XP to <laughs> Alvin from Giggles. <laughs> For being father of the year. Ah. Uh, uh-huh. And that's for Alvin, not for Corval. I know. I'm going down to Alvin right now. All right. So we're on the world map. Where are we going? And we're going to start our way towards probably the main. Are we going to do the main road or are we going to cut across the river and risk death? <laughs> Cormal can easily swim across that river. <laughs> well, that makes one of us. Cormal could actually assist in everyone being able to cross that river. Ooh. Cormal can summon a shark. <laughs> oh, God. So, so that brings the question. Do we want to go the direct route to get to Warden City? Or do we want to go up the main road to Ulfer. You would have to technically go out of your way cuz see there's quite there's a couple miles let's see to go up to Airford um let's see how that's uh we're, we're heading to well just the main road south of Airford. Yeah, yes. but if you went to Airford it would be like 75 kilometers out of your way one way so 150 kilometers a lot. Tarak is okay with taking the road. Because, who knows, maybe we can hitchhike or something along the way. Also, in character, we don't know that he can summon a shark, so. Yeah, so Thalric is all for taking the road for now. Elrid pipes up. Well, I don't know about all of you, but I sink. <laughs> so, battery sink. To walk. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty good at uh, floating in the end. Um, Do you need help floating? If I, I were to fall into the, uh, I, I can call my river, friend yes. Rex. I can call my friend Rex. Who's your friend Rex? Uh, he's a shark. <laughs> Is he a friendly shark? <laughs> yeah, he listens to me. And he's friends with most people that I say are friends of me. And since you're my friend, Elred, he's your friend. Well, I guess then in that case, I, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to crossing a river. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't have a lot of faith in the idea of jumping aboard something that can rip me apart with its teeth. What about tornado? 
That's... Can tornadoes what work? about tornado? How would he cross? I mean, he probably knows how to swim. I haven't asked him. I can't speak to animals. I'm not some sort of druid. But, I mean, he needs to cross the river as well. I think Rex can help him. I'm not... No offense to you or Rex. I'm not sure I trust a shark with my horse. Uh, okay. <laughs> Tell you one thing. I wouldn't trust the horse with the shark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? <laughs> Elrid just uh, pats uh, Cobalt. Um, what? Cormal. 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 On the head and <laughs> say. That's a conversation you should have with Elvin. Do <laughs> <laughs> sharks have hair? No, Rex doesn't have hair. Oh, well, then he's probably safe. Also, 5 XP from Puzz to, to J Gigs for being the bad influence uncle. Abigail has hair. Rex doesn't have hair. Wait, who's Abigail? That's my spider friend that I know. Why does the spider have hair? <laughs> Spiders <laughs> have hair, Garth. I, I love this child. He's got spiders, if they're tarantula, have hair. I'm sorry, but how many, like, animal friends do you have? Well, I, 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 I poof Keely onto my shoulder. I have Keely, I have Petunia, I have Rex, Dexter, and Abigail. Who's Dexter? Dexter's a, a big eagle that I know. But he's not like a big, big eagle. He's just like a, a little bit... He's like my size eagle. That is not saying a lot. <laughs> can, can we all take a moment and appreciate that Alvin has written himself into a corner where upon the time that has passed and Alvin can rejoin the party, um, he's going to now have to play two characters because nobody's going to let go of this guy. <laughs> I absolutely don't let, let go of Cornwall. So you just pulled the J gigs on yourself. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. <laughs> oh, you played yourself. I, I, I'm afraid to be alone so I can find friends wherever I can. <laughs> Same, but I'm usually tripping balls when I find them. What's tripping balls? <laughs> <laughs> um... How are your balls that big? <laughs> oh my well, God. Here you want, little man. <laughs> when, you you hit, hit. <laughs> when you hit above five feet, crazy things happen. For instance, an Ikrath pulls out the eight ball from the pool table. <laughs> and he's holding it in his palm so that he can't see it's a pool ball. It just looks like a black orb. He's like, they can get this big. And then he just puts the, the eight ball back in his pocket. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Let's, um, <laughs> okay, a couple of things here. First of all, let's. Uh, hey, Ikrath, can you do me a favor? Can you tell me if this rag smells like chloroform? <laughs> <laughs> Ikrath sticks his nose in it, takes a deep whiff, and he goes, Yeah, a little save. bit, mate, but you're going to need a lot more than that. Constitution <laughs> save. Oh, yeah, Constitution save. That's not how chloroform works. Chloroform takes a good five minutes to kick Oh, does it? It does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> got balls with a child. Ikarath takes out one of his weird mushrooms and he's like, if you need to knock somebody out, try something like this. It's a lot more likely to work. Hey! Were you trying to knock me out? What? No, I would never do something like that. I know a quicker way. Ikrat, hold your head really still. And he just sort of rears his fist back. This is only going to hurt for a second. Cormal, <laughs> I know how my god, Cormal, please don't take influence from these ones. Um... Ikrat grins and he sticks his forehead out and he goes, Bring it, mate! <laughs> oh, no, I'm not angry, you. just pump, pump. Yeah. Oh, Old Terry is going to sock him straight, Ikrat straight in the jaw. Before that happens, Tarek is just walking up behind Pormal and trying to do like the cover his eyes with his hand. 
Uh, I can't either, see anymore. Either roll the <laughs> hit okay, unless, you don't need to see this. unless Icarath just allows the hit, roll the hit. Icarath is absolutely allowed. Oh, then the just hit. roll the damage. Well, unarmed strike, if you're not a uh, martial class, is uh, one uh, strength plus one. It does one damage. It's strength plus one. Martial classes use a die. So four damage. And he socks you in the face. Uh, your nose bleeds <laughs> a little bit, but, I mean, it's only four damage. Ah, uh, that usually knocks people out. Require the hold still again. Knock people, mate. What is happening? Elrid, uh, Weasel, Verda Cormal, and this is why you don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> what did... Okay, uh, Uncle, uh, wait. He's not my uncle anymore. Hold on. I need to get used to this. Dad, dad, my, my dad said uh, you shouldn't do drugs, so I understand that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't do drugs, please, especially if he offers you any. Just come tell me. More and... for me! Let's go round two! <laughs> sure I am. Um, is he always it's not like working this? yet. Sadly, yes, he is. As far as I've known him, yes. We we may... Uh, see, I, I hesitate to actually knock him out because, I mean... <laughs> He would be invaluable if we were to come across highwaymen or something, but... What's he gonna do, man? offer them drugs? Uh, have you not seen him in combat? He blew away enemies when we were at the capital, or when we were in the, uh, fighting in the siege. Yeah. Plus, I can do this! And he slams his staff on the ground, and it turns into snakes. Woo, snakes! <laughs> It turns into six snakes. <laughs> Alvin's seen this staff before, but Alvin isn't here. Wait, Jagings, you've seen this staff before. Yeah. <laughs> All right, if you can do that, now part the river for us. Cormal's trying to pick up the snakes and cuddle with them. And Icarath just looks around and he sees that everyone is looking at the snakes and he goes, Oh, thank God, no, no. that's real. Thal I honestly uh. thought I was tripping bulls the last time this happened. <laughs> no, no, Thal, he's just looking at Icarath like, He's better not hurt the small innocent child or I'll be hurting you. They're made from the same thing. Oh, no, he's not saying anything. He's not, like, saying anything. He's just staring oh, okay. at... He's just staring at Icarath well, like... In Icarath's mind, it's totally fine for this kid to be holding the snakes because they're made from the same thing, which is whatever reptiles are made out of. <laughs> Solid Perhaps logic. It's like, undead, it's like undead not turning on each other. Things that are the same don't turn on each other, except humanoids. Lord Maul, you might not want to touch those. Those might bite you. The animals like me. <laughs> yes, but these are the ones that might be under control of. And he just waves a hand, like, as if over Icarath. Just like this example. Also, okay. Zario or Callion would like to posit that Alvin actually just needed a honeymoon with his new wife, and that's why he's staying behind. <laughs> if only that were the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, continue though. Perhaps we should continue these shenanigans as we travel rather than just standing outside the city gates. Okay. So you travel. Igarath just picks up all the snakes. <laughs> Cormal is, even though he's been told not to take us, leave the snakes behind, Cormal tries to put one snake in, in a, like onto his head. All right. I think it looks smashing, mate. Just smashing. Which is not a recommendation of what you should do with the snake. Huh? Why would you smash a snake? Wait, why would you do that? <laughs> why wouldn't you smash a snake? Like, I don't have a thing for scales personally, but like, I don't judge, and you're made of that. So no, like... no. Very correct. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what Thank you for the raid. Been... Thank you, sir. Oh my god. <laughs> I just imagine, like, I just imagine, like, 
Icarus looking down directly at Carmel and just talking to him, and then he's starting to explain what smashing is. Derek just steps in between them and is like, no, shut up. Shut your face. Do not interrupt this innocent child. What? what map are we on? I see darkness. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, darkness, so you guys are, friend. it's getting dark. And Woo! I like the moon. <laughs> and that's yeah, the that's path you're on thing. right there. You got top bottom right. Corbold has sunlight sensitivity. I have disadvantage on anything I do that involves oh, that's vision right. while I'm in the sun. That's right. So, sunlight hurts Cormal. You guys And Cormal is on purpose smaller than all of you because he is only two feet tall. I have an idea and I need to pass it by. Then my meta. token should be bigger. Yeah, we probably should. <laughs> Uh, We're just compensating for personality size. Icarath is now a giant! So this is just kind of a cliff off here. Like, just kind of goes up. You got the path coming out this way. Um, there's an abandoned wagon um, that looks like it has a few arrows in it and a couple of crates. More importantly... Is that mushrooms? They are mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined it goes like, oh, there's a thing that loot. Except hold on mushrooms. And he like turns on uh, his Icarath totally, like, is uh, basically the embodiment of that scene from Lord of the Rings where they notice the mushrooms and they're like, oh, mushrooms! <laughs> it's a shortcut to mushrooms. There you go. All right. So, so Icarath will pop one in his mouth and then harvest the rest. Can save at disadvantage. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Nope, that was just a normal con, but it's the same stat either way. Okay, then um, you start foaming at the mouth and you lose uh, 5 HP every hour. Thorak, I think and I, you feel God, your mouth, you can't feel your stuff. face. Like, Dingy. imagine your whole face is numb, but you still have control of it. God, this is a good stuff. This mode of shit. Cornwall's going to look at Cornwall and go, this is why we don't do random drugs. He just ate a poisonous mushroom. Why did he do that? Yeah, I think he thought it was the stimulant of the drug form. So he attempted to eat it to gain the effects of... Um, oh, no. I didn't attempt to eat nothing, buddy. That shit went down. <laughs> you can run. Um, Thalak, do you have a way to restore him to his former self? Former what? This would be I, I, considered I, I, a poison. I don't want I don't know if I can restore him from before he started taking drugs. <laughs> I know that. I did it before he ate the poison. By the way, I'm um, just for you, guy, Meta, can I retrospect it? There's something Alvin would have given the party. Um, probably. The lesser what restoration potions that he had. Yeah, you could give him have have. Okay. Have have so, given. However, you the fuck you say that. I give Thalrak the, the lesser restoration po. Uh, Alvin would have given Thalrak his lesser restoration potions, um, either if uh, Icareth does something really de dumb, or if Icareth somehow tricks Cormal into doing drugs. <laughs> okay, so how many of those do I have? You get. Um, let me double check my lesser restoration count. You get. Four. I say we withhold the first one from him for a little bit, just so he learns his lesson. That's what Thalric was thinking. The bubbling of the mouth is a perpetual thing, so it's like spilling out of your mouth. It's slow bubbling, but it does fill up unless you spit it out. Like it's it's a it's an ongoing uh, yeah, thing. Yeah, no, when it gets full, Icarath just like he he lifts his head straight up and he just spews it like a whale. <laughs> He's really strange. He's also That's really high really on... off me. He's also really high on narcotics. How um, um So how you see a path lead it. out into much deeper forest in the south. 
Um, and it is, <gasps> you, you cannot see any light at the end of that tunnel. Over there, when you see, just kind of ends in, just, it just ends in a little Random hill forest? there. And then you we see are. a path winding this way um, with a little bit of flickering light peeking through some of the trees. Hey, let's pause. So, how, how, does, um, how old does the cart rack look like? Uh, probably within the last 24 hours. Okay. I mean, well, actually, um, roll investigation. Uh, within the last 48 hours. Okay. Uh, do these crates still appear sealed, or do they look like they've been open? Uh, they, the, this one looks like it's been smashed open. This one looks undisturbed. Albert's gonna try and smash open this Wait, one. let's try the, we're just opening it first. Yeah. I just try to lift up on the lid. Um, everyone roll initiative. Uh, dang it. It's a mimic! <laughs> as soon as I can find a mimic, anyways. Oh. I gotta oh. find a picture. I didn't plan this. Oh, poor Elred. Elred, no. Oh, we have to roll for Keeley as well. Hold on. I need, really? I need to pull Keeley's character sheet up. Really? Open. Really, game? Better than a one. <laughs> True. Thank you so much for that file. Sorry, guys. It is making me do evil things to get a freaking mimic picture. What? Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to waste this now. Reroll your initiative, Alred. Ooh. Oh. That's a big mimic. <laughs> I used the the Twitch for reroll that one. So. Now that's a lot better. There you go. <laughs> So Jane let me thing. look. Sorry, um, uh, Miff Trelongo. Thank you for the follow. Just had to get that taken care of real quick, and now I gotta go and assign this thing its stats because it's a it's a it's a thing that we're, we're doing today. Because told you we should have just swung at it first and asked questions later. Um, <laughs> I'm just applying things here so I can remember what things are. At its turn, and it's going to roll the one dice that I never get to use, but I love it because it's copper. And even though it screws over every monster I own, yeah, like it just did. Now I'm gonna take a guess what it rolled for a initiative for my natural mimic. one. Not quite, but pretty damn close. I got a three. Uh oh. Don't forget to add Elred. Oh yeah, yes. There. Yeah, because yours just hates you. Yeah, nineteen point one four. Hold on, I'm making the silence to call out. Max PGA, if I had known that you were going to do a hurricane dab, I have 10k stored up to make him do 10 of those. Oh my god. Amateur, I had 16k before I re-rolled that nat 1. I have 26. Where is Elred? There Elred is. Add turn. And Elred, what'd you get? 19.14. Okay. And we sort descending... And it's Cormal's turn, who just is the snappiest motherfucker on alert. <laughs> Woo! As this thing... Oh, wait, no, it did get a chomp at Elred for... Oh, not... Who op tried to open it? I, I tried to open it. Voltaire gets one chomp at him. Um, <laughs> because you didn't, like, investigate at all. So... Oh, the... Oh, but <laughs> the copper dice love... <laughs> The copper dice love all of you. I should. I would never want this copper dice set as a player. But I just rolled a five, even though it's a plus five to hit. That's still only a ten. It likely misses you. Yep, most likely. This <clears> copper way, dice love you. He's been asked to name the mimic Chester. Oh yes. <laughs> we can name that. Is it my turn? Uh, it is. You saw it try and chomp on Voltaire. Coming! As Corbo comes running up. Um, and uh, since there's two people next to it, I get to invoke the power of pack tactics. As long as there is an ally within five feet of a creature that I'm attacking with a melee attack, I get advantage. 
What was so that? I'm, as long as, so as a kobold, I naturally gain pack tactics. Oh, that's cool. So as long as there's an ally within five feet of a creature, when I make a melee attack against it, I gain advantage on the attack roll. All right. And I will take a swing. I won't use the power of the Teensiest Dragon yet, but I will be using the Teensiest Dragon as my attack. I rolled really bad. <laughs> oh, boy. And, and what are you hitting it with? Oh, the Teensiest Dragon? Yeah. Did I you believe in yourself? You can activate what? your ability. If, that's if he wants to. If you want to. Banzai! <laughs> I love it. So you you do hit, so you have to do your damage. Okay. Um, then with that, I get to add a plus one to the damage. So I do 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage as you chop into the wood, and then you need to... Uh... You need to make an escape DC of 13. Is that a... What is that? Adhesive. Is like what check am I making? Uh, what would a grapple be? Strength for strength. strength. Strength then. Um, and it's at disadvantage apparently. Oh no. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh you do. are able, even though you you smack on it, and it, it your your sword kind of gets stuck for a moment, and you try and pull on it. And you're just, you're just able to rip it away at the last moment before it chomps on you. It's mean. It wants to make me stick to it. Cormo. <laughs> uh, um, oh, since Cormo has the mo mobile feet, I actually it can't take an attack of opportunity and Cormo will run back away from it. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. Um... Uh, yeah, that'll be Cormel's turn. Icarath. Uh, <laughs> is Icarath even aware of what's going on? I mean, you'd be able to see, so, like, something's happening. People are beating shit, so you'd probably hear it. Okay, Icarath is going There's to scoop up noises. all of the mushrooms he's taken so far. Uh huh. He's going to charge straight at this thing, and he's going to stick it down its throat. Uh, <laughs> Dex? Just straight Dex? I think it'd be sleight of hand, which uh, is a dexterity based one. Sure. At disadvantage, probably, because yeah, I just assumed. Oh no! <laughs> we unfortunately already used the natural one. Re -roll. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. This ah. is where he goes and shoves it down his own throat. No, he. You shove it down down its throat, but you also are like, you, it goes halfway down its gullet, so you're like. Half in, half out, and it's chomping on you. Um, <laughs> and it does. Uh, so, so just Icarus's bottom half is sticking out of this mimic, and um, that's not a good and idea. An eight, so three, six, nine damage to Icarus as it's chomping on you while you're half consumed by it. Um, but it also takes. Um, Five damage? Is that what I told you? Yes. That's what you told me earlier, yeah. But yep. that was just for trying one of them. I just, I've just i been harvesting mushrooms up until We're combat We're going to give it started, a three so. times effect, so minus 15 <laughs> health. Um, but you are... That's not, that's not a bad turn. And it's... Oh, it's also foaming, and it's becoming hard to breathe. So you're going to need to... Uh, well, if you don't get out, you're going to take a deep ore of drowning damage. Why is well, he in um, the mouth? Don't, so don't I could about it. cast, or, 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 like, uh, what what Icarath will do is he'll cast Shock and Grasp. I don't know if he'll still get to do that this turn. Um, um, well, that was an that action. Was, so if you, I don't know what, what you can do. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think this turn. But next turn, I can, yeah. I can cast Shock and Grasp and uh, zap it and keep get its uh, reaction. Actually, wait, away. no, you have, you can hold your breath for forever, can't you? So you wouldn't drown yeah. for a while. But it is gross, and it also gross. nobody gave me a potion, so I'm also foaming at the mouth, yes. and I'm now spitting my bubbles into its bubbles. Yeah, Falk yeah. was going to do lesser restoration just by himself, and and then this happened, so that didn't get to happen yet. Oh. <laughs> All right, 
yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Also, before I forget, formal, you have inspiration. You're welcome. Yay. Yes. So, uh, Elred. Um, should I try and pull Icarath out? You can try. <laughs> so, Elred, well, I... <laughs> grab him by his ankles, and he won <laughs> Icarath to try and pull him out. Um, that would be a strength. Yeah, strength check. Uh, you do not make that strength check. Be, uh, you you almost get him out. Um, and you can feel him slide. Like you can actually feel like, and hear him ripping off of the stickiness of the mimic's tongue. But as as he's about to come out, he chomps back down on him. And he takes two damage. <laughs> Guys, I am already at like 40% health. <laughs> the Icarus! <laughs> and it's... Um, uh, so that, that's an action that you that's did. That's one action, yeah. I get two. Well, no, you get one action. You can you so you're you get two attacks. You get one action. Oh. Your attack action is considered one an action, but you get to take two attacks as part of that action. So but man. if you use your um, what's it called? Mm. Why can I like, not think of it? Like, 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 like if I had two attacks and I casted a spell, I couldn't like swing a hammer as well, yeah. unless yeah, I got like something special for that. Yeah, there's certain classes that are allowed to cast cantrips as as one of their attack actions, but... Um, or as a bonus action or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, you won't... You wouldn't... You Your action was to attempt to pull them out. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll go there. And that'll be my turn. Okay. Voltaire. Right, I'm going to walk towards this thing, and I'm going to... Grab on to both sides of its jaw and just attempt to snap its jaw in half. Um, strength. Yeah, it's strength. All right, I'm going to bonus action rage that. So you got advantage on that strength check. And so you are able to pull its mouth apart and start ripping it at its seams. Um, it do, some blood shoots out and you can see it was some purple blood shoots out and Icarath is exposed at the moment. You're holding it open. It takes roll a D eight for damage. All right. And you are holding its mouth open and all attacks against it are at advantage while you're mm -hmm. holding this. And that's going to end my turn. All right, Jordy. All right, I'm going to come around the come around the back here. I'm going to take a couple swipey swipes. All right. You definitely wow. hit. That's gonna be twenty-seven damage, there, boss. Did you did you stealth? Was or is this... it doesn't matter. Oh. He has advantage on the attack roll, and people are. Is it twenty-seven? You don't need advantage on the attack roll. Okay. If you have advantage, or you don't need advantage, if there's maybe within five feet. Uh -huh. So either way, I get some attack bonus. Okay, so twenty-seven. Did you say? Yes. Yep. And then, Dang, rolled the exact same thing. Nice. You guys have very complex rolls. Yeah. <laughs> and then offhand. Meta, wait till we get closer and closer you to hit. level 20, my friend. Oh, wait, sorry. You need to make a DC 13 uh, strength save. Oh, God. Because you get attached. That's why Cormal didn't take his second attack. <laughs> oh, that sword well, is I stuck. Think... It's stuck okay. tight. I'm still going to swing with the other hand. Yeah, you can still swing with the other hand, but that's that just the thing. So, continue. 
that's you hit. 25. And that is four damage. Okay, four <laughs> damage it takes as you whack it again, and then a strength save. <laughs> and it's stuck <laughs> it's firmly to the to the to the mimic as well. It's very sticky. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be it. <laughs> it's the owl's turn. The jokes oh. that we are going to be making with this sticky chest is a little concerning. I'm going to have... I'd like to remind everyone a mimic didn't exist ten minutes ago. <laughs> um, Inspiration! So... Uh, hold on. I have to remember exactly what uh, Keeley's uh, movement stat is. Okay, Keeley has 60 feet worth of movement. Um, so I'm going to send Keeley, because Keeley can't help with a mimic. I'm going to send Keeley up here into like the forest area to look around. Okay. If Because um... it's close to nighttime, so it doesn't seem out of out of uh, whack that a uh, owl's around here. Okay, that's what that's reveal. This is what you can see. Okay. So I'm just gonna have Keely like go up into the tree and sit there and watch for now. All right, Dalrak. Dalrak is gonna be like, he's gonna take a moment when he hears Bonsai from Cornwall. Just all happy that he's using that sword. He's gonna come over here next to Cornwall and see the disaster that is four guys in a chest. <laughs> Uh, one of them stuck inside. <laughs> uh, he'll be fine. He'll okay. be fine. And there's metal on this uh, mimic, right? Meta? Yeah, on the edges. Cool. Yeah, you're going to heat metal, aren't you? Uh, uh, <laughs> wow, Ikrath is still inside of it. And Voltaire is touching it. Only it burns the creature. It only burns the creature. Well, no, I mean if it's if it's you're heating metal, it would it would heat the metal, and if they're touching it, it would heat them. It's true. If yeah. they're touching the metal, but if none of them are touching the metal, it's only the creature that will take damage. Yeah. yeah. I'm holding its jaw, and does that mean I'm touching the metal, or am I like grabbing onto its teeth or something? It looks like there's like metal on yeah. the like, lip. Yeah, there is. The lips would probably be touching you. Rip, you take a little bit of damage. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. So it's halved. So eight fire damage, um, and half of that to begin with to uh, Voltaire and Icarath. So four to each of you, and then apply whatever else that you've got. It sounds like you're resistant. Yeah, and I'm concentrating. So unless this thing changes. It's going to continue to take fire damage every turn. Okay, just keep reminding me. Um, Voltaire mm -hmm. and Icarath will take half of that each turn, plus, and then they can apply their own resistance yeah. and such. Icarath is going to die. Uh, <laughs> strength, uh, strength check, Voltaire. He's got advantage. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Is it biting God. down on your hands? Um, one second. Something just went weird with this focus. Oh, that's what happened. Sorry about that. Um, so now chat can see. Uh, it, it chomps down on Icarath and your hands. Um, mm -hmm. make a. Strength safe. That nat twenty though. Nat twenty. Um, you're wait. Able... Am I making this an advantage? Because I'm halfway in the chest. No, you've been chest making it open. at disadvantage. It's <laughs> fifteen. Okay. So, but you weren't you weren't making a save anyway, so I probably should have said that first. <laughs> oh, my bad. Um, yeah, no, that was my bad. I did not define it. Uh, 
to that would be 15 damage to Icarath. He down. Oh. And half of that to Voltaire as the teeth scrape as you pull back. Your half due to rage or just half, half? Half, and then you apply whatever you got to apply. So basically you take one fourth. You go fourth of the damage. I'd say that's probably four because half of 15 would round it up would be eight. Yeah, so you take four damage. Yep, four damage. But you are, your arms are clear of it after it raked across your arms. It rolled a nat 20, by the way. That's why you got fucked. <laughs> yeah, I see you didn't roll the copper die on that. No, sure. I didn't. <laughs> I wanted it to He's, hit for once. The, the copper die has been betraying him the, so much, it, so he has the, to give it up. The copper die just lose it, like... It's so it's so nice to you guys, and with that, it's Cormal's turn. Um, okay, so Cormal he looks at Thalarak. He's like, I know you made me this sword, but I can't use it right now. Um, oh yeah, doesn't Icarath have to? When does Icarath make his saves on his turn? On my turn. Okay. On his turn. Is Icarath unconscious? Uh, starting the next turn. He's unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Why is he unconscious? Because the, the thing <laughs> chomped down on him and blood splurted everywhere. Rip and tear. <laughs> Until the uh, work is done. This changes my entire plan. Never mind. Um, Cormal runs up to the unconscious body of Icarath. And um, he will cast a second level cure wounds. Oh. Uh, that's not supposed to have a plus one. Uh, so you get 12 points of healing. Yeah. You're still unconscious, but you are stabilized automatically, I think, right? Yeah, he's stabilized. Look, I knew a basically, rule. He, basically, <laughs> he is up with 12 hit points. Yeah, he's got 12 hit points now. Um, And then yeah, that's all I can do because I use my leveled spell. So, so is he conscious or unconscious? He is conscious. He's, he's up in... Yeah. He's oh, well, up he's alive, but he's still inside of that thing. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead, Icarath. Yeah. Not much I can do. Uh, so Icarath goes down and wakes up, and he's still foaming at the mouth, and he's half in, half out of this mimic. And he's just, he's so blitzed right now that he goes, Hey guys, you know how you kill one of these things? How you kill a mimic? You stab it in the chest! <laughs> <laughs> and then he casts Chromatic Orb, which since his hand is inside it, I'm assuming hits. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's gonna cast that at level three. And you can roll double the damage. Oh. Oh, 38, Jesus. 37 points of damage. And it blows up from the inside, and um uh everybody who is or surrounding it roll a Dex save and Icarath at triple, so three dice yeah. instead of two. Important question for uh, just what, have it hit me, dude. What element <laughs> of uh, what element were you doing for chromatic orb? Um, so uh, Icarath's was... a fire guy, so he, it was gonna be fire. Okay. I, I, I had to ask because if it was lightning, my swords were still stuck to this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so unless you release your swords, that's probably a disadvantage for Jordy there. Lucky they're magic swords, so they don't instantly break. Yeah. yeah. They'll probably be fine. Oh, it's my six. goodness. I rolled a natural one. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. What good danger sense rolled in? I got two fours. I'll take the disadvantage. That's still a 20. Oh, but luckily, fine. you guys are uh, they are nice to you. You take, well... Cormal takes two damage, but is blown right over here and just, Whee! you know, tumbles through the ground. Only takes two damage. Um, everybody else is able to get out of the way except for Icarath, who takes three damage and is chucked onto the back of the wagon. And everybody else is able to jump out of the way and... Blown up remains of the chest and purple goo covered gold pile of 40 gold coins is sitting covered in chest goo. Please tell me 40. something has pressed digitation. 
Yeah, Icarath does. Yay. But Icarath is currently not having a good time. He's laying in the back of the wagon and just go, Get it, he's stabbing it in the chest. On account of, that's what it is. <laughs> no matter where you stab it, it's to the chest! He's not looking very good. He does that sometimes. Alvin! No, we'll take Alvin, care of you him. shrunk! <laughs> oh god. Thoris gonna walk over to Icarath and do lesser restoration on him. He's not even gonna waste the bottle. He's gonna just do the spell. <laughs> Cormal will walk up to Voltaire and he's, he whispers in his ear, Hey, Voltaire, wanna see something cool? Okay. Um, and so, Koromal, being as he has natural climbing speed, I will just grab onto this wall and stay there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm just gonna spider climb around the wall for a little bit. Oh my god. It's like a little- Icarath stands up and sees that happening and goes, I don't think it worked, mate. Cast it again. Do something. No, no, he's doing that. Very nice. <laughs> Tharik has not looked back yet, so Tharik just... God, I... If... 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 If Cormal wants to happen, I would love for it to happen, but... It's it, 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 what he does. I just imagine that after Icarus says that, Tharik just starts to turn his head and just put all this back on the ground, like, I'm done. Like, as if nothing happened. <laughs> Uh, Jordy, I assume you're scouting up ahead. Yeah, you said, well, as the mimic fight started, you said there was a flicker. I, I kind of assumed yep. I still see it. There's so. a camp with a little bit of embers left in the fire. Um, you see uh, bits and pieces, just little scraps of clothing and blood. Um, you find bits of what looks like chewed flesh laying around. Elred giving away my position, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, fuck your trees. Thalric just looking at Icarath. I don't know, did Cormall go back on his feet before uh, Thalric turned around? No, Cor Cormall is just staying, is sitting on the wall, like, like a, he's just Thalric leaping on fire. fire. Hi. Thalric just turns and goes, uh, did I get high in proximity to you? <laughs> no, I can oh. hold on to walls perfectly fine. God, you are just the most, um, you are, you are just, you are just full of tricks, and I love you for it, lad. Uh, uh, Voltaire's gonna, just gonna reach into the gold pile and try to find out how much there is. It's 40 gold, 40 gold. pieces. Right. He's gonna take all of that. <laughs> all slimy of it. It's all stuck together. It's also stuck to you, and it takes a strength check of 13 to rip it off your flesh. Okay. <laughs> um, and if you, yeah. And if you do succeed, it's uh, one point of damage. But you don't pull it off. It's stuck to your hand. Um, um, someone, it's stuck. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like a you problem. You know what, that, it. Oh, oh yeah, it is. It's, it's, sure, it's a me problem. It's exactly oh. what happened. Like right, this crazy. It was crazy. One time, I was with my friends. We were just bopping along, and we found a wagon. And then somebody touched the chest, and I slipped and fell, and I ended up half inside it. And like it was stuck to me. So I. Because I that just happened. <laughs> oh. I wonder. Um. No shit. Thalrak, oh, um, do you think if I punch something? The gold will get off of my hat. Oh god. I know where this is going. <laughs> don't, 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 don't kill Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> He's at oh, 9 god. HP. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I know that is because he took 3 damage and he was at I gave him 12 yeah. HP of that last <laughs> with my healing. Thorak, I need to know. No, if you, if you, uh, you go, what do you need to know? Things like, 
I need to know if I punch something, if the gold will get off of this hat. I, I don't know. It's okay. So I gold still, please. No, not to me. Do it. Punch the damn wagon. Okay. And I'm gonna punch the wagon. All right. Roll a strength save. You are now stuck oh, to the wagon. Oh my god. No! <laughs> Someone, does anyone here know how to get this crap off of me? Meta, is uh, this Icraf just, will like, hop down wait, to the wagon. Meta, is this just like slime on him? It's, it's a sticky slime that's on the, him and the gold that he... So he grabbed the gold which is covered in the slime, so now he's stuck to the gold, which is stuck to the slime, which is stuck to the cart. Hey, hey, Voltaire, you can take a little bit of heat, can it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just taking this cart with me. And I'm going to uh, strength walking. check? That's a not athletics, no. athletics. Keely seeing you do that immediately flies off the wagon who came over to see Ma what was Make going an athletics on. check. <laughs> oh, no, you, you, you try, but the wagon is not budging. You're just pulling at your arm, and it's stuck. So, so Voltaire, you, you sure you can take a little bit of heat, right? I am not getting rid of 40 gold. I'm not saying I will move this wagon if it kills all of you in the process. Voltaire, <laughs> it's not gonna... You know, where's Tornado? You're not gonna get... You're not going to lose the gold. I'm trying to do something character. different. Doesn't Icareth have prestidigitation? I think that's what Icareth yeah, is Icareth trying to do for you. Yeah, Icareth does have prestidigitation. <laughs> so, Tharak, like, if, if Voltaire, like, if Voltaire doesn't give him a solid no, Tharak's going to be like, why don't we just heat up the gold coins and, you know, evaporate the slime? Right. Um, does anyone here have prestidigitation? Yeah, no, that was Alvin. To... <laughs> I, 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 it's a simple trick. It's just like you go, and then you just shit, and then they're like, it's not a hard thing to do at all, mate. Rickroth, could you press to digitate the slime off of this golden cart? Uh, yeah. Let me let me just uh. <laughs> <laughs> Icarath cast minor illusion to make it look like the uh, he pressed and digitated the um, uh, the slime off of the cart and says, "Hey, guy, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what's happening. It's up to you whether you think Fultero believe. Uh, I guess I'll make the investigation check. Yeah, I, I guess his spell save is sixteen. Isn't that convenient?" Oh no, you think it's off. <laughs> I never would have guessed. But thought you were going and I'm just gonna pull. <laughs> and you you pull so, and uh make an athletics check. I'm loving this so much. <laughs> oh no, it's not going fucking anywhere! <laughs> Uh, Icarus uh, cast it again. Icarus cast it again on his shoulder to make a really loud bone crunching noise. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> uh, you can try to. I don't know. What would you roll to think if somebody was lying? Insight. You're rolling insight against that 16 spell save? Yeah, no, that, that that sounds like you just popped your shoulder out of socket or something nasty. Oh my! You don't feel any pain, <laughs> but it's, it, you get the sound that's associated no, I, with it. Um, if your shoulder pops out and you don't feel anything, is that a good or bad sign? Oh, uh, dude, pretty, do you smell toast? That's pretty bad, lad. What? That's pretty bad. <laughs> Doc's gonna come around to the back of the wagon and be like. Look, just let me evaporate the slime by two coins. It's gonna burn on your photo. I don't no, I don't think that's enough. Off. I think we have to set the whole thing I think we have to set the whole thing on fire, mate. No, we don't have to set no, we don't have to set the whole wagon <laughs> on fire. No, 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 come here. 
We can use it for. We can no, use I'm pretty sure we have to set the whole thing on fire. There's a rope in my pocket. There's a rope in my pocket. Nikura, shut up. And he's gonna. If I mean, you'll the hit the thing, roll damage, I guess, on the cart. No, no, no. Yeah, he set the cart on fire. Uh, yeah, that the cart started on fire. It's not enough to hurt anybody yet, but the railing is definitely on fire. Zarak is gonna start smacking will... it off. <laughs> and Grab looks at Voltaire and he says, "If you can feel the fire in the extremities of your hand, that's a good sign. That means that the bone is Zarak. mostly broken." Zarak Someone is get my rope out of my pocket and tie it up to my horns. Zarak is quickly. Starak is already padding up the place, and he's gonna be like, Voltaire, just calm down, I'm gonna heat the gold, it's gonna evaporate the slime, and you'll be fine, and you can keep the gold. Just yeah. hold on a second. What the hell's and happening over here? Cormel, get my rope, it's in my pocket! Cormel also, Cormel also has a, uh, a, a, a napkin that, you know, can get clean off flesh. <laughs> Wait, I, that oh yeah, it cleans off flesh. I could actually detach it from your skin. Yeah, you can actually rub it off of him, his skin. Icarus hey. turns around But the and gold will still Elrak. be stuck to the cart. Darak is going to heat the coins. Does that evaporate the um, the slime if um, he's doing heat metal on the coins? Roll whatever your spellcasting stat is. What color is um? Normal? I mean, it's just. He it, I mean, it's heating up the flame. It's heating up the coins to um like glowing red hot. Like so, they are absolutely able to like evaporate water or something. Sure. So who's he? Is it being heated first, or is he being wiped down first? No, no, no. It's I'm Tempe's so I am I'm legitimately just heating up the coins that are stuck to Voltaire. To evaporate the slime and okay. thus they just drop from his body. Um, the fire on the cart flares much more. You do no. I, I said I was patting that out beforehand. I said yeah, I was no, but that it's, out. It, the coins are attached to the cart. Yeah, so when a new fire starts, that's fine. I'm going to start patting those out as soon as I can. Yeah, but... that's fine. But yeah, the yeah it's new, just, new it's... flames roar into but, life. No, the wagon is just going to have some like burned circles into it it's not it's not that bad. It's, you said it's red hot red hot would, would yeah spontaneously you can still combust burn you can a fire it, a wood. it doesn't spontaneously combust a fire because if it uh, whatever it's fine fire all right fire starts power, <laughs> out. but once the coins have dropped he's gonna uh remove the spell but that also means that eight uh, damage to voltaire no, no, no. It, I gotta roll the damage here. Oh, I thought it was just a standard eight. No, it's it's two, uh, two d eight. Six damage. Six damage, and I think you get half of that, right, Voltaire? Uh, I'm not currently raging because oh, combat. Oh, okay. yeah, and, and raging is only for like. Oh, I just um, thought it was a racial thing. No, it, it rage rage can reduce to half, but it has to be like um, piercing, physical damage, slashing. No, it's, it's all the damage except psychic. Oh, is it? Okay, it's yeah. it's, it's for his because he of his subclass. His rage oh, right, the subclass is that more. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, so I walk up to Voltaire and like uh, six damage to Voltaire. That's on I, fire. The gold is on the ground, red hot. I have. Gosh, I, I can clean this off. It's off already. The freaking. Thalrak decided to heat the coins up. The well, Thalrak. I want to make sure that you don't have anything else on there. Oh, yeah, no, nothing else is on there. I just want to pat Cormal on the head. Oh, okay. Thalrak is going to, like, put up the flame. Ingrath turns to Thalrak and he goes, Is he just really fast or are there a bunch of little dragons? Huh? <laughs> no, he's just fast. He's a small, nimble lad. But it's actually kind of fun. But then Thalrak's going to walk up the Voltaire and be like, all right, let's take a look again. He's going to heal him. Thank you. Akerath is going to wander down the ravine, harvesting more mushrooms. Uh, but he's using Mage Hand to do it, so he's yeah. not... Do you get, so you, he's not basically, I heal you for the damage that you took, or Voltaire. Okay, so yeah, you grab a small pouch, grab like, I don't know. Or it's going to... 50 grams of... In mushrooms with no context and see the healing and roll his eyes and immediately ask what did Ikarath do 
Don't worry about what Icarat did. Don't worry about it. And he's also going to like, look at Voltaire and be like, how's your shoulder feeling? Because he didn't know that Icarat like, did a um, minor illusion. <laughs> yep. And then real quick, we will happened. flip to Jordy, who's by the camp. Or was. Are you still at the camp? I, I came back with the screaming, but I was as the screaming was starting, I was trying to look inside the tents and see what was uh, there. They are empty, and they look like they were stocked for, you know, just the standard night's camp. Um, the, everything is in disarray. Like they, like, they left the tents in very quick order. Uh, I want to see if I can tell... Oh, God, this roll is going to be awful. I want to see if I can tell what direction they Uh, <laughs> you're not sure there were ever people here. No, no, it's all formal, but Steph's from running around. <laughs> he, just, he just tracks formal. Yeah, around. no, no, yeah, no. That's what. It, no, yeah, you just you just walk in circles around the camp, convinced that you are tracking them. Uh, what are you? Uncle Jordy, how? What are you doing? I'm trying to figure out where the people who stayed here went. Um, you want me to look? Oh, some help wouldn't hurt. Okay. So we're in a forest, right, Meadow? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the reason why I had to ask because my natural explorer type is forest. I gain advantage on survival checks while in forests. And I bet you don't have a negative one modifier for it either. <laughs> so I would like he to take a look. He can still roll a nat one. I would like to take I a look at these tracks. Look, that actually came in handy for you once, Jay Giggs. As actual uh, role play. 17. <laughs> <laughs> you are able to determine that he, they, they were likely eaten by the mimic. Um, Uncle Jordan. They died. Yeah. Ew. That would explain why the tracks came back to you. Did you kill them? No, I didn't kill them. The <laughs> mimic killed them. Yeah, I mean, it did try to kill Icarath, so that does explain <laughs> a lot. Yeah, they, they they got eaten. I guess we should see if there's anything remaining with the mimic other than just the, their funds that... Well, Voltaire tried to pocket. Speaking of, and I'll walk up to Voltaire. Do you have our cuts of the gold you took? It's on the ground there, if you want it. Narak is gonna, um, in the meantime, he's gonna inspect the wagon, see if it can be like quickly repaired to be used, because with Tornado pulling it, we could use it as part of our transportation. Uh... If somebody has at least one proficiency in like craftsmanship, it can be repaired. I have wood carver's tools. Do you have proficiency in it? Yes. Then you can repair it if you so choose yeah, in character. I have proficiency with um my smithing tools. This would be a woodwork can... that would need to be done. Okay. Well, I didn't if, know you, if, it... if you do like the metal work to help me with the rims, because I'm uh, yeah. I won't be able to do that. You well, can, yeah, you get it automatically for having proficiency. So. Well, okay. Like it's basic enough that I'm not gonna make you roll for it. Cormal will be like, uh, "Do you want this?" As I yeah, point the cart. Yeah, let's try to use this if we can. You think you can help me salvage it to be working? Okay. And Cormal will pull take, out some tools. Probably take six hours. Okay. With the amount of disrepair it's in. Uh, Cormo will then ask if he if he can sleep. If that's the case, Cormo will ask if he can sleep during the day on the during the travel. Oh, wow. or, yeah, if we need you, we'll wake you. All right. Mm -hmm. And then, once the wagon is fixed up, is there anything in these uh, crates behind it? No, they look like they've been ransacked. Okay, they've already been ransacked and stuff. Yeah. What is that, Corey? What is what? It's um, like an, a jar. That, that's just, just a jug of water that's just left by the river. It's got bloody handprints on it, but and some there's some blood on the ground around you, but 
kind of looks like it was dragged off. Uh, just like dragged that way. Icarath is just collecting mushrooms. <laughs> is anybody going to cure Icarath of his poison? Oh, yeah. It's probably I, I been, did, it's probably did. cured. Oh, yeah. He Th did get Thalric cured. already did that. Yeah. Thalric already yep. did that. Okay. After the fight. Uh, while you he guys just, he are didn't heal preparing... more. No. No. That's fine, though. While you guys are preparing the wagon, if that's going to take six hours, Icarath is going to read his book and he's going to attempt to make a poison. Well, with the mushrooms he just got it's getting close to nighttime so you yeah you could probably read it and then do mushroom craft okay do you have a proficiency yeah. yet have i been awarding you i do not have that? proficiency yet but he does have them so i think he just uses a straight intelligence check to use them okay go ahead uh, uh, also i would say if you are working on poisons and you say something to jordy i am proficient with the poisoner's kit and i have a plus one poisoner's and he kit. really wants to use it Ever since he didn't get as much stuff from the snakes as he thought he would. I also have yeah, I mean, you would notice Icarath, because it, Icar Icarath is developing the habit of humming under his breath constantly. Uh, so whenever he's working, so it'll be a telltale sign whenever Icarath starts working on stuff that he's humming melodies that he plays on his loop. Um so you would notice him setting it up because he's got to set up a little fire. He's got to set up his little things. You might also recognize it as specifically the one from Alvin's house, but I'll let you deal with that in your own okay. way. <laughs> uh, all I'm really going to be doing is giving you advantage because I'm helping. Oh, cool. Feels really good to roll at advantage you as opposed to disadvantage. Make a poison that can be used to grant that effect of the mushrooms and can be mixed into um, drinks or food and it does not have a flavor. And you're able to get four doses for a vial. So okay. that's, that's an ingested poison. Yeah, ingested poison. It's ingested. It's, it's a poison instead of a venom. Yep, and it's flavorless and you get a one vial with up to four doses Shroom juice. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> I thought it'd be correct. Hey kids, you want some shroom juice? <laughs> no. And the effects last six hours. So um, it all said and done it would do thirty damage through the life of it. Okay. Um <laughs> just for thematic purposes, uh uh, Cormal is expending a spell slot to bring back Petunia. All right. So Petunia is back, and she's just helping Cormal like hold up the the cart as he's working. All right. <laughs> um. So you were having me track out of a hundred, and I've read the book a couple of times, and then I've made the potion. How much do you want to have me add? Where are you at right now? Well, okay, so before this, I'd literally read the book one time, so I'm at two out of a hundred. Okay. And then in our session today, I've read it for, like, about three hours, and I made the potions. I'm going to give you a four for the time and five for the potion. Nine. Okay. Eleven out of a hundred. And what else is going on with people here? Um, there's a camp over there. I mean, you guys could haul the wagon to the camp if you guys wanted. I mean, it's not immovable. I mean, if it can be moved, we'll move it towards the camp. But at the same time, like, it's not critical that we move it. But if it makes things easier, then yeah, we'll move it. Yeah. I, if you guys want to sleep and make sure I don't get hurt, I can. We can drag it over there. Oh, I'll, I'll help. I'll help move it. That's fine. We'll move yeah. It. So I'll do it. I'll expend a second level spell slot to call Abigail to help as well. Um, a strength check from everybody and take the highest. All right. Not everybody who's assisting pull. anyways. I need to pull Abigail and Petunia's character sheets open. So there is Goofy, Abigail. Your strength checks are just not being nice to you today. And there's Petunia's. <laughs> oh, Corval, the littlest. That's Petunia. Sorry, no, that's Petunia. Petunia. So Petunia, hundred percent, just picks it up. What is that roll? A twenty-two. It's a strength check. No, but what's the? 19. What was the? That's not a nat twenty, is it? 
It's not that good. Uh, okay. Basically, Petunia ruled the same thing as I did, but oh, she Abigail, had. Abigail, Petunia, and Thalrak just bear lift it over your guys' heads and just walk it to the camp. Uh, over all of our heads? Um, probably, oh, not, probably not yours. Oh, oh Voltaire and... gets smacked and falls to the ground on his hands and knees. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of the way. So the wagon's back oh. at the camp. Judge and Kumaral has a shitload of friends. <laughs> Like if I was ever to play as a character, I would always want to play as a character with a bunch of little minions. Yeah, so Abigail lasts for a whole hour, so now that Abigail's here, she's she's also going to be assisting me for yep. an hour. And uh, Petunia gets to last for three hours, so she's assisting me. All right. And Keely's just looking for like the finer twigs inside the trees to help me repair. Also, the... for the combat, you guys can take... Mm, I might if you were if I were to give yeah fuck it you guys can have hundred experience a piece okay all right so are we doing anything during this six hour down period or are we just sleeping forward? yeah I think people are either doing their trance with the two the two elves are doing their trance. And other people are sleeping, and Cormall is just di diligently at work. All right. Um, how long? And then for the now? other two hours, I was reading the book and making the potion. Okay, so long rest. Is that a long rest for everybody? Eight hours, except for Cormall is the only one not taking the. You can't take the long rest since he's spending six yep. hours to repair. All right. So yeah, you guys do all of that. Um, Corm, everybody wakes up. There's nothing that happened overnight. It's uh, early morning, nine-ish in the morning. Um, the cart is repaired. Uh, you now have a cart that whatever you want to designate that cart as. I'm sure there's an actual item for it. It's, uh, I believe, just a cart is a normal D&D &D thing. So yeah, you just got a cart. Um, and go ahead. You're all waking up. Cormal, you finished your work. What's going on? Okay, so yeah, carts are carts are yeah. So is it? It's a it's a just a standard cart, correct? Yeah. Okay. Maybe like half capacity because like that one's like half of a full cart. Okay. Well, because there's a carriage which is six hundred pounds and carts which are two hundred pounds. So yeah, we're gonna go with a half cart, so okay. it can be pulled by one horse easily. Luckily, Korma Kor Korma weighs weighs over very under that mount. So if you want to, if he can just sleep in the cart, on um, in this next part because he needs to rest now. Alrighty, well, come on, tornado. That's my boy. All right. Um, do you guys have a harness for him? Hmm. Uh, hold on, let me see. Did, did we see anything? Was there like a harness? Or yeah, there's, there's, there's one attached to the harness front. attached to it. Yeah, it has yeah. a harness. Yeah, it has a harness. I, I was looking at it like it already. I was looking at the picture like it looks like it already has something on the front, but. All right, I'm gonna strap tornado in. Um. There you go, boy. So I will, uh, I'm going to hop the cart and I'm going to just kind of keep my bow at the ready and I'm going to be on lookout duty while we're traveling. How much can the cart hold? A uh, hundred pounds. Oh. Uh, half a cart. Then I, then I do not do that. It's a small cart, so it's a, it's not a big one. Yeah. No, I was going to say at least, um, Four malls on it. His thunder will just, or tornado will just fall all over him. Yeah, um, Cormal asks, goes up to the one of the tents, and he goes, he, no, he will go up to Thalrak. He's like, uh, "Can you help me with one of these tents?" Sure, uh, let's go take one down. And Thalrak's gonna look for like the one that has the least damage to it. 
I mean, they're all in okay repair. I mean, they're not like damaged. No, I, no Corvo no, 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 wants but... something to hide his himself from the sun because the sunlight sensitivity is going to bother him when he tries to sleep. Oh no, that's fine. That's what he figured it was. Yeah, for. you could totally because yeah, if you look at the construction of that car, you could totally tarp a tarp a tent over there. Yeah, that's that. what we were going to do is just like tarp over the. You top might have to throw some like nails or spikes or something in there to keep it in, but yeah. Well, no, no, it has the rope. We just wrap the rope around like the underside or something. Yeah, you could do that too. You can also, if the, I there's the pegs like, that are going into the ground too. Those are metal yeah. spikes. The weight yeah, you were looking at, Alvin, that's the weight of the cart, not the carrying capacity. What's the carrying capacity? What's the cart's carrying capacity? So the the. <laughs> Uh, I actually looked this up for rules is written. It actually doesn't specify a max carrying capacity. It just talks about how much a horse drawn carriage can, can carry mm -hmm. and a horse drawn cart can a horse, a single horse can haul 2,700 pounds. So the cart is 100 of that 2,700. Okay. So it's a tiny cart that the horse can pull. We're right. going to so say basically what this cart could hold. Two just, people, it, it, two standard, two normal sized people sitting with their knees up in their chest for volume. So like four by six ish. Okay. Okay. Um, in that case, we'll start with Coral. That was one I low and then two if we need to wake him i can wake him yeah it's got a 400 pound carry capacity yeah, it's still got some limit because it's tiny yep so there you go that's the spacing plus it's the, plus cool. it's the wheel uh strength yep four by six and 400 pound care carry capacity technically voltaire could ride tornado and we could yeah. get the you could also yeah. have voltaire ride tornado well, that means Vol yeah, because Voltaire has to con is the person who's who tamed the horse, so you should probably be the one riding the horse, it, yeah. directing it where it needs to go. So I don't think any of us, except for him, have animal handling. I have good animal handling, but I want to. But Cormal's gonna sleep. <laughs> All right, so you guys set off, mm -hmm. and we go back to the main world. And you guys are where, where? Where was your line that you guys were attempting? We're doing the. I think we're doing the full. If we're taking by foot, it's we're going. Uh... Okay. Uh, do you choose to stop in Olford, or do you guys just kind of go through town? Um, do we want to stop in Olford? It's so close to the Sea of Thieves. I don't know if we'd have a reason to. Yeah, unless we like desperately needed supplies at that point, I would just say we keep going. Like maybe pick up like food provisions, but that's about it. So that would be sixty five at that. Sixty five. Oh come on, let me do this. Sixty five. Yeah. The, the only thing that I can imagine is if Elred would know of like a slave trade in Elford, he would want to stop. Sorry, just uh, doing some math real quick. There's not really any slave trade in Airford. Um, so it would be about two months travel to, to Watoon. Do you feel like you have that much supplies? I mean, we have the wagon that we can load up with some food provisions and then, you know, some Well, like, would you walk. have set off with, like, two months of supplies? I feel like Alvin would have seen thought about that and sent us off with the appropriate amount of supplies. Yeah, and then you could probably choose to resupply at Latoon if you so chose. Yeah, and plus we can always grab like a couple extra days at Olford if we feel like yeah. in case something happens. Honestly, Thalric would probably just go and get like a couple extra days of rations for at least the party if needed, just so that way. If we got delayed by something, we at least had the provisions and not had to like. And if you get Cormal to a forest, he has the ability to ca gather double the normal food that people that he can gather with a survival check. 
Uh, we don't know that yet, but if Fu becomes a warrior, then he can be like, oh, hold on, disappear for like an hour, come back. And uh, Cormal only needs half the normal food amount because he's a small creature. Also, if we do run out of food, Ikarath can subsist entirely on his drugs. There just will be fallout from that decision. <laughs> Is there a fallout from every decision he makes? Basically. Oh, God, no. <laughs> There's consequences. It's not fallout necessarily. The word of the day is consequences. <laughs> okay, so you guys cut to Ikrath in the back. Oh just seems like that's the word every day. No, no, <laughs> Ikrath just in the back shoving <laughs> a mushroom in his mouth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> God. That's just what I imagine of like, it's almost like a backstage camera just behind the, like at a table just shoving a shrew in his mouth. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you guys travel along together and somehow surviving Icarath for two months. <laughs> um, and at the start, it says we'll wrap it up here because there's stuff. There's what Watoon exists, and you need to resupply, and there will be things happening. Um, so we'll end as you approach the gates to the city of Watoon, which remain conspicuously closed um, as uh, night begins to fall. And that's where we'll leave it. <laughs> um, so, thank you guys. Just saying, but if it took two months to get there. Ikrath would have been reading his books every day. Um, you can take 60 points. Fuck yeah. All right. Um, so from there, um, thanks everyone for watching. Oh, sh I, I remember before we ended experience. Um, Hooray. I was just about to ask that. Like, wait, 600 the experience? experience. Ooh. I feel this was an exceptionally well role-played session, and you all deserve just as much experience as if you had taken down a dragon or something. Woo! So I feel like we all missed it. You know, <laughs> we're all we we're all in rare form today. It was great. So thanks everyone for watching. Um, we've got more D and D tomorrow with party three. Um, they got a little bit scared of an abolith just you know popping up and hey how you doing uh we'll see how that's gonna turn out um they're very scared of the water and uh have a great rest of your day everyone